Welcome, everybody. Nice to have you here. Let's do a little prayer with, before we get into eating. We, we ask God's blessing upon us tonight, certainly upon the food that's before us. And as we always should pray for those that are not as fortunate as us, because tonight we enjoy the blessings of family. We enjoy the blessings of friends. We have the great blessing of wonderful food in front of us. And we have the example of people like Jim and Allie to really move us into a deeper love ourselves in our own life. So thank you, God, for the blessings you give us, but also make us generous in sharing these simple but important gifts with others. Pray for safety tonight, especially for those that are traveling home tonight and afterwards. Give us always uh, your, your comfort, your grace, but keep us mindful of the poor that are not as fortunate as we tonight. We pray for all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to continue the evening with a couple of speeches. If you would, please make your way to your seats. Oh, microphone. Oh, boy. Oh, you got a, like, a little pin, a tie pin and everything. I love it. And right here to my left, we've got the first toaster right here, the father of the bride. Everybody, a round of applause for Jeff. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. <laughs> Help us celebrate Jim and Ellie's wedding here. Um, it's quite a group, quite an addition to our family. Um, and f where's Father? Father, you rocked that. I'm telling you, that's the quickest I the wedding I've been to in years. Thank you. like you all to raise your glasses and have a toast for Allie and Jim's internal love and relationship. And lots of grandbabies, I think, too, right? Good luck, guys. Love you both. Enjoy it. Next up, I'd like to invite up the sister of the bride and the maid of honor, ladies and gentlemen, Samantha Rue. Okay, so like you said, my name is Sam. I know some of you guys know me as Sammy, but only Allie gets to call me that, just so you know. So um, when Allie and I were growing up, a lot of people always pointed out, you know, how different we were, and mostly that's just because of the physical differences, obviously, you know, she has the dark hair, I've got the light hair, the light eyes, dark eyes. And so, I guess I kind of liked it that way, maybe, because it made me feel special or unique in some way. Um, but it, let's see, so what was more stark, I think, were the differences that we have in our personality. So Allie was always known as the soft Pollyanna, and I was the callous seven-year-old. <laughs> and so I think it took me entirely way too long to figure out that these differences that they were talking about were actually, um, you know, things that I was lacking. So I had no idea how to show people that, um, how, sh how to show people I cared about them or how to let people care about me. And so uh, I had this amazing big sister who constantly wears her heart on her sleeve in the best way possible. And she has taught me that being soft and compassionate in a tough world is so much more a sign of strength than weakness. And Allie has this amazing gift where just about everything that she does works towards the goal of lifting other, people's up, other people up or filling their buckets. <laughs> and even more amazing is how effort, effortless this is always for her. And so, in other words, Allie is the big sister to look up to. 
She's not one to put others down or point out mistakes. She's patient and so incredibly resilient. I can't help but feel so lucky to have such a sister to look up to because as I reflect now, even though we are still very different people, I can see more similarities in us than differences. And so, like I said, I have my big sister to thank for that. Although I can't hype her up too much, so just to <laughs> knock it down a little peg, I do vaguely remember her cutting off one of my pigtails when I was four years old. <laughs> Oh, so an update, she cut them both off. <laughs> so when I've... <laughs> okay. So when I first met Jim, I immediately noticed how, how witty he was, and I appreciated his dry sense of humor. However, it made me question the match, because, first of all, Allie's best joke is about a guy with a pickle stuck in his ear. Ask her about it later, it's not that funny. <laughs> and second, I was a little bit nervous that he was going to make jokes and they would go straight over her head because she's the sweetest person in the world. <laughs> now, I was down at school when, um, when they first started dating and when their relationship first started, and so I didn't have the privilege of seeing the relationship grow. But when all of these worries that I had just melted away when I saw their first Halloween together. And I know it's kind of silly to point out the Halloween, but this is when Allie was dressed as Madeline from, or Madeline, from a children's book, and Jim dressed as a nun, a female, obviously a female nun, <laughs> Miss Clavel. And so, for whatever reason, this is the moment that I realized that Jim seemed to be willing to make my sister happy, even if that meant dressing as a female nun from a children's book. It was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, son, you don't have to admit that. <laughs> I was going to say, it's either that or Jim just enjoys cross-dressing a little bit because, because this past year's Halloween of Dorothy and the Wicked Witch from the rest even tops that. But... <laughs> So I'm not sure about Allie, but that's what is important to me is that somebody is willing to walk, walk alongside her and not be afraid to make a fool of himself rather than, about, rather than um, just kind of nodding along and being there. So I am um, happy that Jim seems willing to value and encourage her and because that's what's, what a partnership is, is two people giving 100%. And working with one another. And so everyone, if you wouldn't mind, it would fill my bucket if you would raise your glass and <laughs> toast to Allie and Jim. I'm so incredibly happy for the two of you and I can't wait to see how the two of your lives unfold together. And I'm honored to be here and witness and be a part of this all. So, yeah. Yes, they're both mine. One more round of applause for the maid of honor, everybody. Next up, I'd like to bring up the best men and brothers of the groom, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick and Kevin Reardon. How are we feeling tonight? Pretty good. By round of applause, clapping means good. Good? Okay. How about a round of applause real quick for Jim Reardon who had barbecue at his wedding and did not spill a single drop on his shirt. There's a first for everything. So let's keep it going. Love that for Jim. So I uh, first want to start Thanks to the Roops, Jim and Allie, Mom and Dad. <clears throat> They've done a, for everything you've done to bring us together tonight. Beautiful day for a beautiful couple, and we're, an honor, we're honored to celebrate you guys. 
We all know Jim and Allie both love to tear up a dance floor at a wedding. Anyone who's seen Jim dance at a wedding, we're going to have to have a quick toast for every female here that Jim decides to tip a full 180 degrees upside down tonight. And a brief moment of silence for the one or two that might accidentally get dropped on the dance floor. It's his night. Just let him do it. It's just, please, just humor him. Okay. But, um, but we digress. Jim and Allie, we love you both. Jim, thanks for bringing Allie into the family. Anyone who has been around our family knows our sarcasm and the tough love that we tend to show each other. And then there's Allie. You are so bubbly and constantly shower genuine, genuine words of praise on everyone that you come into contact with. And honestly, it's quite refreshing. Uh, your optimism and the way that you are always beaming with a smile from ear to ear is so contagious. So thank you for the nudge in the right direction and how we should probably speak to each other and build each other up a little bit more. <laughs> you are so kind, so caring, and always down for fun of any kind, and we love that for you. And we love how much that you and Jim love each other. That's, that's great. And you're up, um, <laughs> so great. You know, we don't see it enough in these days. It's really sad. <laughs> your uplifting spirit will make a great addition to our family. And Jim is so lucky to have someone with those traits that will surely translate into being a great wife and a great mother. Welcome to the family. We love you. And how beautiful does the bride look tonight? A round of applause for that. And, and now on to Jim. Jim, how do you write a best man speech for someone who we know would have written a much better and more hilarious speech himself. It's pretty tough. When I was writing the speech, I was thinking, I want to make this as funny as possible, because that's what Jim would do. He'd make it so funny. What would Jim say? And it honestly put quite a lot of pressure on us. But I can't complain too much, because your sense of humor is part of what makes you a great brother. So really, uh, it evens out. We'll be all right. Pressure's on, but we're all right. I also wanted to make sure I had a speech prepared that was worthy of Jim, but I was mostly thinking, I have to make sure Kevin doesn't make this speech completely about himself. <laughs> In the end, we decided to just speak from the heart, knowing we won't be as clever as Jim, so what's the use trying? Growing up in a big family, you just can't help but look up to your older brother. I remember spending much of my childhood in awe of Jim, whether it was schooling us on the basketball court, or beating a level of a video game that we just couldn't get past. When you're, little, when you're a little kid, being good at sports and video games is peak coolness. And Jim had that in spades. Then I grew up a little bit and followed Jim uh, to high school and college. <clears throat> I saw he never had any issue making friends. Luckily for me, that meant I always had a good group of guys looking out for me at Naz and Marquette to always make sure I had a good time, always make sure I was welcome around them. So I thank all those guys that are here tonight for that. One day that always sticks out for me was I received a phone call from Jim my freshman year at Marquette. He started yelling at me, but it wasn't anything bad. He was mad at me that I wasn't hanging out at his house enough, and I wasn't showing up to my parties for my fr with my friends early enough for his liking. Which, that was a turning point where I realized I wasn't just a little brother anymore, I was actually considered a friend. Aw, oh, aw, oh, isn't that just adorable? I love it. love it. Pat and I very much benefited from having a big brother to stick up for us. And not that there was ever a big schoolyard bully that he had to really stick it to on our behalf, but his mentality of no one makes fun of my little brothers but me was always apparent and always there. And he never, ever hesitated to take the big brother blame when the heat was on. And that even extends beyond our family. As an example, some of you may know this story. When we were on vacation in Michigan, Jim was maybe 20 at the time, and he and some of our cousins and some of our family friends took to the docks with a few cases of beer. We weren't innocent. I was not there. We would, I would never. I would never. <laughs> a few cases of beer. Now, being the teenage idiots they were, after they drank the beer, they thought, oh, we'll sink the cans in the lake, which is 2021, not great for the environment, we know. However, luckily, the next morning, all the cans washed up onto the beach. So it was, <laughs> we're fine. Tur the turtles are fine. But the owners of the place we were staying took all the cans and plopped them at our parents' feet and demanded an explanation. They're all upset. So the parents started interrogating the kids. 
And all the kids just went deny, 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 which worked out okay until they all got together and then realized, well, well, someone had to have been drinking. If my kid, my kid would never, if my kid wasn't drinking, someone had to have been. Enter Jim. <laughs> Took the blame for it all. He just shouldered it all. He didn't throw anyone else under the bus. Even though, yeah, it, it, he took the blame and then that just like they let him? Like doesn't take a scientist to realize that like a 20 year old can't drink 100 beers by himself and live. So even though that's all messed up, I don't know how he got away with that. Now everyone else got, really got away with it, but that just shows that Jim, he literally did not even flinch. He, he's just willing to take the blame and that's, he had to do a lot of that unfortunately. We're on to the last page now, just for those keeping it. <laughs> Kevin and I agree that of the long list that we appreciate about Jim, the number one thing, as Kevin just mentioned, is that you fearlessly led the way for your siblings, siblings to show us what to do in life. Ironically, sometimes the lessons were from what not to do. <laughs> for instance, throwing a high school party that left the basement floor literally sticky enough to pull your shoe off your foot. <laughs> a lot of people are here. Well, they say making mistakes is the best way to learn, and Jim, we thank you for allowing us to learn from yours. Any other of my fellow uh, to uh, line towers out there know how hard it is sometimes to make out that gray area between what's socially acceptable and what, what isn't. Um, so me personally, I've from, from seeing Jim make some mistakes and being able to avoid some myself. Now, unfortunately, I still have crossed the line so many times I cannot possibly imagine how much more trouble I would have gotten into if I didn't have Jim's example to follow. So I personally thank you hugely for that. My mom and dad definitely also thank you that even though they don't know it as well. And this all kind of seems like a backhanded compliment, like, oh, Jim's making all these mistakes, but all the mistakes are just tiny blips on the radar in the grand scheme of things. Jim has been so successful in his life by every measure of the word. He has effortlessly blended into any crowd he's ever been to. He brings people to tears of laughter on a consistent basis. He has a great job. We can't count the number of people who consider themselves a friend. And now he has a beautiful and loving wife. He's got it all. Whoa. Some pretty sweet siblings as well, I will say. Great family. But your many accomplishments are so much more impressive that you've had to go through life first. All of the Reardon kids have you to thank, as our successes are all built in part on the foundation of your example. We don't say it enough, but we're so grateful for you, and we love you. So cheers to you and Allie on this day. Cheers to you for the rest of your life, to health, happiness, and a marriage full of love. To Jim and Allie. Let's dance. One more round of applause for the best men, everybody. And I believe finally, is a word from the people you all came here to see, from the bride and the groom. Ours is going to be a little shorter than Pat and Kev's. Um, I, just, I just really want to thank everyone who came out today, tonight. I'm so glad that, I mean, we, we couldn't have planned this more perfectly. The first weekend that Milwaukee's open, no mess. So nice to see all your faces. <laughs> So nice that we didn't have to uninvite anyone. We won't tell you who was going to be uninvited if we had to. Um, I'm just, we, we feel so much love in this room. We're so happy you can come here. Um, I don't want to spit, I don't want to monopolize the whole time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody.
It's been such an amazing, amazing weekend, such amazing people, family, such an amazing man, and I'm just so thankful for every single person that's in this room because they helped make the people that we are, and um, I couldn't be more thankful to be with Jim, and all of you had a part in that, and the other half had a part in this, so <laughs> here we are, and let's celebrate. I know it's been sad, but thank you to the Roops, oh, yeah. my new family. Thank you to the Reardons, my old yes. family. Thank you to our new family. <laughs> Let's party.